Everybody, we uh, we're actually back this week with a live show. We're on the internet. We are on the internet. The internet is actually working for us, and we oh. we just couldn't be happier that Wow no longer hates Santa Claus. Wow does not hate Santa. Uh, however, Instagram does. However, Instagram does for sure. So, hey everybody, welcome to the technically speaking live show. My name is Greg. As always, to my right, on the upper end of mediocre, is the man himself, the legend. At least that's upper end, I suppose. Yeah, it is. I'm saying that you're you're the the better than fiftieth percentile, like fifty second percentile. I I didn't put a number on. I just said you're better than the. 50th I percentile. am, on Instagram, the Scott Peachy, the one and only. On Twitter at Scott Peachy, and you can find me on Twitter at ominous hominid. Ominous hominid. Already, I was waiting. Uh, already a comment on the sign. Yes, that was actually gifted to us. Uh, by a friend of ours in the channel, Ian Banks, who runs, yeah. uh, Ho I think it's Home Bank Studio on Instagram. Yep, check him out. He does fantastic work, so he made Amazing. us a sign for the 1% Studio. If you check out my Instagram, you can actually see a shot of the 1% Studio, which we use with OBS. Yep. Uh, at the Scott Peachy on Instagram, which, I'll be honest, I don't know how much longer it's going to go. Yeah, you're, Instagram you're, is really screwing up. You're kind of you're kind of fired up, so uh, let's... Quick rundown of the topics today. We're going to be kind of catching up on what happened last week a little bit, since there were some fairly big things that still apply this week. Christmas. Uh, and yeah, and there's this whole holiday thing that happened, whatever it's called, Ooh, something, something. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is basically the 2018 year in review show for us. Um, we'll just kind of you know recap some stuff, talk about stuff that happened last week. We'll be talking about Facebook. Um, Fortnite has been getting the pants suit off of it, so we'll kind of you know dip our toes into that um rcs is coming finally uh if you don't know what rcs is stick around we'll be talking a lot more about android's answer to imessage um and, and it's not one of google's five messaging platforms <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is absolutely a hot take that we have on that particular subject oh. uh and last uh unbeknownst to us there's a company or a, a organization called loop ventures that does an annual um, smartphone assistant IQ test to see of all of the assistants that are out there who is the smartest one so we've got kind of some of the breakdown from that so yeah take man. a wild guess who it is yeah it's leave a comment it doesn't if you take, know who it's gonna be it doesn't take much it doesn't rhyme with beery <laughs> or Bortana <laughs> <laughs> it rhymes with Tugel Sabithdent that's what you went with? That's what you went with. I went with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, I'm 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 out of practice. You are, you are. Larry wants to know whether or not you have highlights or if we just have better lighting. It's better lighting. I'm, Actually, I'm everything about today's show is just better. It there, is. The lighting is better. You can't see back here behind us. Um the lighting used to be right here. Uh the studio looks slightly different. Yeah, uh, actually bit. we are streaming. 24 frames a second, right? No, we're doing 30. We're doing yeah. 30 frames a second. So 1080p at 30 frames a second, but that camera has the ability to do 4K, although, uh, we'll be full disclosure, we didn't know if the internet was going to work, so we wanted to just make it as pretty as possible without breaking things, like WoW Internet, because they hate Santa a lot. So wow. I'm, I'm talking on uh, two people in the comment section, too. So Miss Sheila very much says I'm not warmed yeah. up. You're not warmed up? That's your sis. I'm not Ouch. warmed up. I'm not warmed up yet. I'll, I'll wait. wait. Ow, that's hurtful. How, sh how should I bring in? Like, what's what's a good warm-up thing for me? Uh, let's... <laughs> Unique New York. <laughs> Unique New York. The human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite warm-up line. What's, in uh, what's another one? <laughs> yeah. Get a children! Get a children! Oh, they're in the house! Oh, so, yeah, do you want to jump right into... Explosive piece. <laughs> Good lord. Explosive. Uh, Bluish-hued hum, plums. Hums. Hums. Uh -huh. Ooh! That's a hot take. Yeah, I almost you... went into it and I was like, I want to. I'm like, I don't yeah, think I should. I probably shouldn't. Let's talk about Instagram since that's the front most uh, so in your brain right now. I was perusing Twitter today mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden, like my feed started to just blow up full of comments like, Instagram, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, comes to find out that on iOS, and there are a few iOS users that are out there in our comments. One or two. Uh, that just they, they, it was a bug. We'll come back to that in a second. There was a bug that Instagram launched to evidently all iOS like devices yeah. today, this morning at like 10, that instead of like the Instagram feed that you scroll up through and then you kind of like a photo and you do your thing, well, they broke that mm -hmm. um, and then decided that they were going to, instead of going vertical, because they've been pushing like vertical filming, vertical film taking, vertical pictures, they were going to go to a tap to move horizontally, almost like a tender swipe, I guess. I've never used tender, so I don't know. Uh, okay. Not a swipe, but like a tap. Yeah. So you tap to go to the very next photo or the very next profile, <laughs> albeit, again, not chronological because that's still yet to be a thing that Instagram has gotten to done to do right. But if you tap, it would move to the next one. However, when you would tap and it wasn't in the right spot and you happened to be on an ad, you would activate the ad and the ad would come up. So you were essentially clicking on the ad. Now, they Which actually is... had a whole screen on iOS that they said, welcome to the new layout or something like that, yeah. tap to get started. Well, within like, it, no joke, seven, Seconds. like seven minutes. Yeah. Seven minutes through a whole ecosystem that this went out to, they pulled it back and was like, just can JK. J JK. <clears throat> JK. And then they put out a statement that they called it a bug. Look. You brought up a good point. A bug is like, I missed a semicolon. Or I did a thing. Or, like, I took a picture of you when you said not to take a picture. That's a bug. That's a <laughs> yeah. bug. Yeah. This, this wasn't a bug. This was a feature enhancement. So if you have Instagram on iOS, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, that's coming. So you saw it. It's not a matter of if that's going to happen. It's when that's going to well, happen. They're going to do that. Hang on. So I, my my take on this is it may have been a bug that they accidentally released it to production. I, again, being, being in IT working with code, I can see how, oops, we accidentally pushed this to a place that it wasn't supposed to be. We were just testing, blah, 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 whatever. It's not a bug that just randomly, magically, completely converted your entire user experience. This is something that they have absolutely put a bunch of design time mm -hmm. into, design and code time into, to mm -hmm. make it work the way that it did. That's not, a, that's not something that happens if you misplace a semicolon. Nope. But it may have been a bug that they pushed it to production, or personally, what I think is more than likely the case is that it was just user testing. I think that they wanted to see what the reaction of the community would be because that's <laughs> frankly how a lot of features are being tested. You are not only the product in most cases, but you're also inadvertent beta testers. Microsoft has already admitted to that fact. Google does it too. Users are the beta testers for the enterprise clients. So Microsoft tests patches on your Windows 10 box before it goes out to the enterprise. And same thing with this. Again, my theory is that they were testing to see what the user response would be if they completely changed the layout and it wasn't good ha the fact that they changed it in seven minutes tells me that the, yeah they got the data they needed <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go ahead and say that i i think that they're really testing a fairly radical change mm -hmm. like that now it may not look exactly like what that one is i actually i'm gonna go on the other side of the fence i'm gonna put the line in the sand to say yeah. that they got their testing i think they're gonna go to that um I, I think they got what they wanted out of that. I think they're going to go to it. I don't know why. I, I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because everything on Instagram is done vertically. vertically. Yeah. I hate that as a person who wants to just go mm -hmm. take this picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, drives me crazy that they do that, but I get it. But just own it. It's just a. Na it's more natural for me yeah. on Instagram to scroll up and down, not left or right. Again, I've never used Tinder, so I don't know what the swipe thing is, but... It wasn't even a swipe, it was a tap. That I, have makes a I, have a problem, I have a problem with the tap. Because if you accidentally tap the wrong part of the screen, I then just accidentally opened up an ad that I probably didn't even want to see anyway. And because it's owned by Facebook, what does that mean as far as like, now I'm going to see this ad everywhere? Because yeah. Facebook ads are... Facebook owns enough advertising yeah. networks that 
you know, just even if you're not on Facebook regularly, or even if you click on something within Instagram, you will see ads like that appear elsewhere in your internet browsing experience because Facebook has its little greedy, dirty little fingers into everything now. Everything. I gotta be honest, I like, and you know I love Instagram. You know, I know you do. You, know I, the... you have been you have been on the Instagram bandwagon almost longer than anyone else that I know. Like you made the switch from Snapchat forever ago. Forever. I'm ago. considering getting rid of Instagram. Yeah. Why? Oh. Uh, uh, first of all, it's a time suck. Like you wouldn't yeah. believe. It's just a massive. I get yeah. bored, and what do I do? Yeah. I go to Instagram. This a just a time suck. Um, I get that. In a video that I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna put you on the spot or not. In a video that's coming out Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. coming on Sunday. Yeah. A video that's coming out. I was like, on... I actually don't know what you're talking about. I had to think the of video like, what that we filmed together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's coming out on Sunday. So the video this Sunday, we actually hint in the video about what social media is, mm -hmm. um, and that, I'll be honest with you, that particular bit's weighing on me a little bit to go. <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to like sit back and take a take a yeah, take a little bit of a breather. Yeah. You know, I, Gary, that's a great point. I love you, Gary. <laughs> uh, I will actually just look on Twitter to make sure that I can see that you run an eight minute mile, on, and I can't do that. He, you pump out eight minute miles like it's nobody's problem. Like you're like, ah, I had to go for a quick jog today, seven fifty nine. I had to go for like just I didn't really want to do it, but I had to do it really quick, seven thirty two. Like mm -hmm. he just like. No big deal. And I'm like, at seven minutes, I barely drive a mile in seven minutes. I damn sure I ain't going to run one. <laughs> damn sure. I can, I can do, you know, eight-minute miles, even sub-eight-minute miles, but I might only get one or two of them. Oh, no. He re he'll be like, no, like he, he'll pop out three miles, like 20 okay. minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes. I, I can I can get behind 20, that. 20, 21 it's, minutes. When, when you start getting to like the 5 and the 10 miles and then like sustaining that pace. <laughs> you don't see the hours when you're complaining. Uh, <laughs> hey. Look, brother, I that's feel that exactly, one too. That, you I know feel what? that one too. That is something that was brought to my attention. My wife mentioned that the other day is like part of the problem with Instagram is people see that they, they assume that your life is a bubble. Yeah. And you only see the good stuff on Instagram because no one wants to put the bad stuff on Instagram. That's not what, yeah. that's what Twitter's for. <laughs> well, that's, what, that's what Facebook is for. Yeah. You put the bad stuff on Facebook and Twitter because it's just quick words you don't think about it. But like, if I fall down and break my leg, the last thing I'm thinking about doing, hang on, no, I gotta I gram totally, it really quick. I would put that on Instagram. Well, you I would put it on. Uh, you would, but not in the I'd moment. Put it on Twitter. In the, yeah, not not on the in moment. the moment. You, you would yeah. totally tweet. You'd be like, yeah. I didn't break my leg. Oh my god! And just, then it would be over. Just like that. Just like that. I still didn't hit the red. I know. I have been trying, though. For good reason, because you are the loudest human being on the planet. It's a true story. <sighs> I, you know, I... that came up during family. I was I was the bingo caller during Christmas. We have a bingo event that we always do for Christmas. I And I was the bingo caller. Didn't realize that yeah. you were the youngest in what is apparently an entire family full of elderly people. Yeah, like we had the... We had washable markers because the kids mm -hmm. play too. Yeah, but we, we had daubers. We were gonna have daubers, but uh -huh. it's not washable. Mm -hmm. We were thinking. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. a bunch of thinkers in mm -hmm. that family. A bunch mm -hmm. of them. Hey, I the am phone. judging you. Are you? <laughs> so judging. G, G forty four O, B ten, B twelve. Oh, that's a great point of it. Oh God, you are ridiculous. Very loud. Uh, I think I'll delete my socials. Oh, you won't. Speaking, I won't. I won't delete. I'll de I'll delete Instagram before I delete Twitter. So a lot of social media stuff happened in yeah. the last couple of weeks too. So uh, in, uh, Facebook has had a <laughs> miserable 2018. Mm -hmm. Miserable 2018. Mm -hmm. True story. Uh, I was curious about. Uh, there's so much stuff that's happened as far as fa Facebook data scandals at this point. Even I'm having a hard time keeping up. Let alone what the average consumer. Uh, probably thinks of it. I'm, I'm willing to bet that the average consumer probably looks at Facebook is in the news again and, and might even think that it's the same story just being rehashed and not yep. not ever being dropped, which is not the case. Um, so I started looking for just like the, the, the year, give me the grand total, give me the tally of, of problems or scandals that Facebook has had in, in 2018. And it's impressive. I don't even have the complete number yet, but it's isn't it something like 13? There was there were that I could see probably 3 to 4 on average 
news stories about Facebook doing something, either getting caught or some data scandal or something or others per month. So, I mean, you're talking... Well, three to you're four per month, you're over 40, you're over or, 50. 40 or Yeah, 40, I don't math. So Mathing is hard. 30, you're, you're, 40, talking, 30, you're talking 42, in, in the 50 vicinity 45, for the year of 2018. A lot. And, and that's not, a, a lot of those were fairly minor, but we're also talking about the big stuff like Zuckerberg being on Capitol Hill and being grilled by a whole panel full of people that don't understand technology whatsoever. They were talking about a Google phone during Facebook and they didn't have any idea. They had I'm, no idea. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was the whole Apple... How does my iPhone work? But I mean, by, CEO of Google. By the same token, it's it's I don't know people asking Zuckerberg like how basic technology stuff works too, and and they were just completely ill-equipped to ask important questions. Yeah, I think both Sundar Pichai, Google, and Zuckerberg, Facebook, on Capitol Hill, answering questions about how your data is used, who it's being sold to, what that data like, do you have access to that data? What's going to happen with all? All of those are important questions. Very, very important questions. And I think it's just a travesty that the people that <laughs> the, our elected officials that were sitting on that cabinet asking questions didn't run it past maybe one of their junior pages, somebody who might know how to spell iPhone. The problem that you're going to run into is the folks that... The, so there's a law out in California called the CACPA, the California Consumer Protection Act, it was signed into law by the governor, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Brown, mm -hmm. in the second quarter of this yeah. year, I, the date escapes me. They're trying to model it after like GDPR over in Europe. Basically, it's Which is basic a huge deal. private protection. Uh, so I think the, the, come, the law comes down into four pieces. One, you have, to just, you have to know what data that you have on a consumer. Two, um, <clears throat> what type of data is that? Like a PII type data, PHI, PCI, which is credit information, health information, and identifiable information. Uh, who are you sharing it with? Meaning, um, if you know Facebook is sharing it with everyone, which they are, they have to disclose who they share your data with. And then four, you have the right to delete it. Now that right to deletion is a little squirrely, and this gets to my center of my point. The point is, these people are writing laws for what will be the legislation in California. Uh, will eventually come to the federal side, so all states will start to adopt this because states get uh, in, you know, they get very envious of other states doing things that they want to do, and then consumers start writing their congressmen and senators, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, there will be something that stretches across all of the federal statute, eventually. Uh, the problem is, these people have no idea how that works, nope. and they don't ask the people that know how to do these things for help because they think that they can just do it all because, well, I'm a congressman or I'm a senator or I'm a thing. No, you have to understand this is a very niche market thing. Go out and get, I, I don't buy, I don't build a house. I'm not an architect. I can't read a blueprint Fair. at all. I'm not a carpenter, electrician, plumber. I'm not those things. So I don't pretend to be those things. But if it's a situation where I need to go get that person's expertise, go get it. Go well, get that person's expertise and then say, help me write a law that makes sense for the consumers, but they don't do that. And that's my problem with where the laws are right now when it comes to data consumer privacy. It's a big deal and people are paying attention, but they're not doing it right. And I think part of what, part of our frustration as consumers and people that are involved in technology that see what is arguably like the obvious answer, like just do this one thing, what we're missing is the impact of uh, lobbying. Like, uh, arguably, a large portion of the less than desirable laws, rules, policies that we get is in in large part because of lobbying. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I get it. The, yeah. the people who have the money make the rules, man. That's, that's just like age old thing, but it's starting to shift a little bit. GDPR mm -hmm. shifted that. It put the power back in the consumer's hands, well, for the most part. Interesting, though, that that's a thing that started in Europe, where, where, I mean, the internet is basically an export of America at this point. And I know that's going to be a wildly unpopular thing to our, our uh, overseas viewers, but, I mean, let, let's be real. It started in America, and that's not supposed to be bragging rights as much as just saying that this is where it got started, yeah. and it slowly expanded across the globe. And now, I think... As we have companies and governments that exercise some kind of uncomfortable control over the internet, 
I think we as Americans are, are best suited by having people on the opposite side of the globe that don't want to have those things, those types of policies enforced on them. And so they fight back and say, no, 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 GDPR. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that it took Europeans doing that for us to be able to see some type of net benefit, which is where the, what is it, the CACPA, the, yeah. the, the California version of the GDPR came yeah. into play, which is by the way, if you ever Promising. want, if you ever want to read something that will put you to sleep, oh. go read that law. Oh my! God. And let me just go ahead and tell you right now, that law is trash. The way it's, the way that it is written is impossibly dense. Terrible. Yeah. They say, well, all all, all PII data, well, are all PI data, personal yeah. identifiable data, and that yeah. no Where joke. Do you draw that line. No joke. I'm not kidding when I say this. You can go ahead and quote me right now. They actually put in olfactory in there. Your smell. Your smell, how you smell, specifically, they write yeah. in the law yeah. that your smell is P.I. Okay. Not B.O., but P.I. <laughs> what you did oh, there? Oh, I got dad jokes. Hey, oh. I oh. sees it. Yeah, uh, they seriously write down smell. Okay, but do you think, okay, do you think that it's a terribly written law, or do you think that they are trying to, they're trying to project forward in time to see all of the different ways in which you could collect data about a person that could be used to either track, uniquely identify, or other or characterize, like, what they do, how they do, where they do, all of those I, I things. I like where they were going. Like, yeah. I like the idea that they were thinking, like, I don't know, but maybe one day, like they sure. they got the they got the the I got my fingerprints in yep, there, got yep, the ocular, yep, like, yep. optical reader, I got all that, love it. The smell is weird. That's just weird. I'm not sure how you would capture that to yeah. say like yeah, you yeah. have a smell like that. Yeah, that's a Greg smell. This is a Scott smell, and that's a Greg smell. But I and I know that, so let me take a big whiff of Scott. Especially that's since, just weird. Especially since we don't know exactly how the sense of smell works. That. But again, I see where they're going. Yeah. The law is written badly because of how they define personal information. That's the problem. That I completely It agree. is so broad. It's so broad that you basically can't store anything. Correct. In which case, it leaves all of the consumer, or consumer, it leaves all of the commerce, e-commerce companies going, well, what do I do now? And, and we're starting to see now some of the effect of GDPR and the California mm -hmm. law where like all of these recent disclosures about Google Plus, when Google Plus was in the news again just a week ago? Yeah, two they weeks basically ago? said like, oh, we were gonna shut it down in mid-19. We're like, oh no, it's first quarter 19. Yeah, like, now we're shutting, shutting it down it like immediately really fast. because there was yet another data leak that came out of Google Plus, which is what basically got them in trouble and made them decide to just close the entire platform down originally. There was another data leak and they just decided, screw it, let's just pull the plug almost immediately. And yeah. that, that's all because of basically laws like GDPR. They had to. They were legally mandated that they had to disclose the uh, data leak within hours. 72 hours or something. Yeah, yeah. Like once like they that. knew that it was there, it's it's uh, it's quick. It's like 72 hours they have to disclose it because of GDPR. Yeah. Well, they should just, at that point, once, it get, once you've disclosed it to Europe, yeah. people in America just... Oh, you're going to... Obviously, know. you're going to be like, yeah. well... What about my data? Yeah. They don't just shoehorn off. Yeah. Like, this is Europe. This is America. Which oh, is, that's like, which no is what's interesting, I think, about GDPR. The fact, that, the fact that you have the internet as a global entity and you have a law, which is a local or regional entity, that can impact globally is super fascinating to me. Because oh, yeah. it, it totally shifts the balance of power now. Because the, the, the internet was supposed to be this big democratizing thing where everybody has like equal access to information and yada, yada, yada. You know, yeah. cue all of the utopia conversations. And now, you know, as it's been bastardized, frankly, and turned into like this weird thing that more and more people are kind of really not comfortable with the direction that the internet and social media and stuff like that's going. Creepy. You have one, one geographic area that, is, that decides they're going to pass a law that impacts literally everybody. Super interesting. Long story short, delete your Facebook. Yeah, hashtag that's, that's delete the short Facebook. Version. There, there's a there's a video huge push on a channel someplace. There's a video on a channel about deleting Facebook. <laughs> I think we've talked about it a time or two on the same Maybe. channel. Maybe just delete your Facebook. Yeah. I deleted my Facebook. Was the best thing. Yeah. You know what I didn't have to deal with? Any of my, like, how do I say this without? <laughs> you want me to Let write? me back that up. Hmm. Delete Facebook. Yeah. I'll but just leave it at that. Don't let him give you too much crap, though, because this is still a dude who's on Instagram. For now, you want me to delete my Instagram right now? I bet you won't do it. 
Oh. I bet you won't do it. <laughs> I bet you won't do it. I bet you won't do it. I won't delete my Instagram I know you right won't. now. There you go. I, there I, you go. It's a long, Wait, drawn-out process, way, and I have to be a part of the show. Scott, way to display your weakness I everyone. Weak. I have got to be a part Weak. of the show. Weak. <laughs> you know what? Weak. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't fair. You That's still fair. have a Facebook. You haven't logged into it in forever. Yeah, because you I don't still even have know, Facebook. I don't even know how to log into it. I could not tell you what email address it's associated with. I couldn't delete it if I wanted to. Exactly. So he's always on Facebook. Delete your Facebook, and this guy can't even do it right. Which <laughs> he can't even <laughs> delete can't, his Facebook. I can't even Facebook. He right. can't even Facebook right. So he's oh, perpetually on Facebook. You're just feeding data to Facebook. No, I'm not. You are. You're literally feeding data to them. How? There is there is a zombie profile that's out there just feeding them data. You're feeding them data. You know what? I'm okay with that because that zombie profile isn't my data. You have no so idea. I what about care. that? What about that Draw email? The conclusions you. What want about to? that email address that's out there that's linked to you? Like maybe that very last thing that's linked to that's just a shred of you, just a little bit inside. I can that tell heart you that's two sizes too small. <laughs> Random Grinch quote. I can tell you. Look, if if they are if they are you Facebook user, if they are creating zombie profiles and whatever based on my information, y'all are drawing the wrong conclusions, and I'm fundamentally okay with that. You you can take that data and run with it. I <sighs> yeah. You know who else has been getting sued lately? Your favorite people, Epic, Fortnite. That's such a dumb game. <laughs> That's such a dumb uh, game. Oh man, this this might be one of my absolute favorite stories, uh, just because we make no secret of the fact that we're not neither one of us are big Fortnite fans. You don't even play I think video it, games. I don't even. Really. I, I do. I have started to play okay. video games again. Yes, yes. You're so you got a switch for Christmas. My my son got a switch yeah, for yeah, Christmas. Yeah. He got a switch for Christmas. By default, I have played it. Probably four times as much as he has. I can almost guarantee that. And and Super Mario Odyssey, by the way, is a, just a great game. It reminds me so much of like the N64 version <sighs> of My Mario, sings, which man. I love. I love. It's not game. stars, it's moons. Yeah. But he calls them bananas because they do That's look like hilarious. a banana. Hilarious. He goes, Daddy, I got I got three bananas because you get like a <laughs> group of bananas. And this is, I was like, What? Oh, he I goes, I got three bananas, and I was like, Purple oh, bananas, of course. Moons, moons, got it. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. Article 13, Everyday Dad. Bro. Yeah. I, I feel you. I feel you. It's not perfect by any stretch. No. But it, I, you know what? It sounds bad. Even as a content creator, I will take what Article 13 in the EU does to us if it gets us the data privacy yeah. that we need in the U.S. Yeah, please I will take please that trade off. I don't like it, but I will take the trade off. Please believe I'm I'm with you on that one. Like it, yeah. whatever happens with YouTube, uh, our our experience on YouTube, and if if you're a creator out there and this thing impacts you, I get it. I, I fundamentally understand, but I, I personally am absolutely willing. I will sacrifice everything on this channel to have that level of like consumer privacy. I've been a consumer longer and will be a consumer longer than mm -hmm. I have ever been or will ever be a content creator. So. I think that's a, a much bigger deal. And anyway, it should also be Fortnite. noted, like, um, I'm, I'm pulling up a story right yeah. now. Article 13 threatens hundreds of thousands of jobs. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with that. And I mean this with a grain of salt. That is coming from YouTube CEO. Yeah. And YouTube is in the business to make money. Mm-hmm. So. Read into they, that as you will. They can probably. Healthy grain of salt. They can probably do things to change it mm -hmm. for creators mm -hmm. but that means that they ha may have to impact their own bottom line my personal opinion so uh you got anything else with that uh we'll talk over you no go ahead gary says that's totally fine i got my son smash brothers for me to play how good is smash brothers you know i have not oh played smash brothers ever ever dude smash brothers is is really close to my all-time favorite fighting wow game. It's, really it's so good it is so I hated it at first because I mean you're talking about somebody who who grew up with like I still remember the original Mortal Kombat when it first hit arcades because I was an arcade junkie too. The original Mortal Kombat, Johnny Cage, and oh I played oh, oh my God. so Mortal Kombat so good. Mortal Kombat three yeah was the first one with the mechanical smoke. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So and I went Cyrax and yeah. Oh, yeah so yeah. I went to uh, Cyrax six, is my jam. Sixteen bit. Yeah. Uh, Sunday. Yeah. And I remember, I remember all the smokes moves, including the thirty-one percent muscle memory. Man, it's yeah. weird. Like it's like I couldn't tell you how to do it now, but you get in front of the, like, the yeah. joystick. Yeah, yep. it all comes back. Yeah. Da 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 da. Like ha ha ha. You go into yeah. the screen, up the screen, yeah. and throw it. Ah da da da. Thirty-one percent. Thirty-seven. I think it's the total. Do that a couple times and you move your way up the ladder. Game over, oh, man. Oh, man, I love it. Sorry. Mine, mine was Mortal Kombat 2. That was Reptile, really? Reptile and Mortal Kombat 2. I was unstoppable. That was my dude. Uh, and Scorpion, to a lesser extent. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so the interesting thing about Smash Brothers is how it's very accessible as a person who is... It's accessible as a person who's not into fighting games, but there's a there's a tremendous amount of depth there for people that are really, really, really into fighting games. Like people that talk about, um, okay, so you need to be able to counter this move on this frame of animation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look into the fighting game scene sometimes. Hmm. Um, more, uh, uh, Street Fighter is notorious for when you hear people talking about like you know juggling and going going deep on people, which is like where the animation overlays just enough to where I punch and it looks like I'm punching through you and you've got like this many frames to counter these moves. It gets crazy with some of these games. Anyway, so Smash Brothers is super duper accessible, but it's also fun. Um, and I mean, how cool is it to be able to play like this, this entire roster full of characters from video games that you played growing up? So yeah. I absolutely love the way they've done Odyssey. Oh, uh, Odyssey is so it's good. So, like, could you get the hat? Yeah. Go through the story, but then you go back. Like, there are portions within the map that you go back to, like Mario One. Yeah. And they just lay the, it into the two D mode yeah. where it switches between two D and three. They lay it into bananas. the two D mode. You play the two D mode for a little while, and then you smash the blocks to go up. And then as soon as you jump out, you're immediately in three D. And it's like, it's okay. Yeah. Hang on a second. It's what? so crazy, that, man. It's so uh, crazy. Russ. Russ. Ah, oh, Russ. Long time you, supporter of the channel, Russ. Yeah. Nothing but love for you. You know that. Russ, thank you so much. We uh, we are trying. Um, <laughs> actually, we talked to Russ on the side about... It was really funny. We had a text message uh, conversation. Don't one, you don't know this one. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Russ and I and Scott Greenstone, another content creator and Google top contributor, have a side chat going on. And, like, when we were going through all of our brand changes... Yeah, yeah. Um, Russ was like, hey, you should do this. And I was like, like this? And I would link a story or a link back to a video. He was like, yeah, exactly like this. He goes, but you should also do this. And I was like, like, like this? this? And so everything he described, <laughs> he was like, you know what? Keep up the good work. And so, yes! uh, dude, that's such a great feeling. Too. It, no, it was you're, everything you're that he said. Ahead. And he is, um, he is a person that I trust his opinion on, especially marketing stuff, immensely. That's huge. Uh, so he, everything that he listed off was everything that we had done or had been planning to do. Yeah. And we did it. And he was like, well done. Okay. okay well, I'll take that. Hey, I didn't know any of this was happening, but Russ, thank you so much for your input. I, I, I love gathering feedback, uh, especially from people that have like some type of background in this type of stuff because yep. i mean i don't i'm a dumb it guy so i'm i'm trying to make it look pretty as i can but it's He's really nice dumb. to get yeah i'm still dumb it's really nice to get feedback uh positive or negative one way or the other so also on the switch is Fortnite, who has been getting the pants suit off of them lately It's because it sucks which i think is hilarious uh it all started with uh some no-name rapper that nobody cares about who Oh, I was like the Millie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, whatever. Millie, but Millie, but Millie, yeah, whatever. Millie. Um, so yeah, basically Fortnite is in trouble because they are selling kind of iconic dances, mm -hmm. uh, which are in kind of video game parlance. These are emotes. So the idea is you can push a button and then your character will dance. And and what Fortnite is doing or Epic, which is the maker of Fortnite, what they're doing is kind of motion capturing these, you know, some very iconic dances so that your character in the video game, when you push a button, does that signature dance. So for example, think of the Thriller dance or think of the dance from uh, Napoleon Dynamite or what have you. All of those are dances that have made it into various games throughout time. So this, whatever rapper, I don't care. I love rap. I don't know who this dude is at all, nor do I care. Sued Epic because they, they, they copied his dance mm -hmm. and are now selling it. So this is the dance where he's—it's that dance, right? 
I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it's that. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's that one. Yeah, with the legs and the hands, yeah, and yeah. I can't do it because I'm white. Because <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> uh, so it started with him, and then pretty soon a bunch of other people jumped on board, including uh, what's his name? Car- not Carlos. Um, no, Alfonso. Alfonso, uh, which you may know from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, who had the Carlton dance. Look that one up. Everybody knows the Carlton dance. Um, he jumped on board to sue Epic for using his likeness, and so did Backpack Kid. I don't even know who that is. You know him because he's the kid that invented the, the floss. floss. I thought that was a girl that invented no, the floss. No, that was him. That's this this apparently good-sized Instagram dude. Um, younger kid. The Backpack Kid? Google the Backpack Kid. Wow, it's like the fourth one when you start to do it. I'm telling you. That's the kid. Check out that video of him on Katy Perry. Uh, Katy Perry's video, whatever. It's the fastest floss I've ever seen. Okay. I'm we're working. we're you, doing this you, live you, right yeah, now. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to see this kid. So, uh, all of these people are now suddenly jumping on board to, wait for it, f- uh, to sue Epic because they are using these these dance moves. Oh, geez. That is the fastest oh, yeah. floss. It's the fastest floss I've ever seen. The interesting thing, though, is a lot of these dances are old, and a lot of these dances have been in a ton of different games. Uh, the 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 Carlton dance has been in has been in video games going back for like eight or ten years at this point. I think somebody put together a whole list of video games that that specific dance has appeared in, going back to like 2008 or something along those lines. And he at no point in time has this been a problem up until. Fortnite starts making a bajillion dollars, and now suddenly it's like, oh, hey, I need to get mine. Backpack Kid has an interview where he's talking about, yeah, I don't really care, you know, I, I just think that it's cool that my dance is being used. Now he is on board with suing. So it's just kind of I mean, they've got to be able to get some, like, how, can you even copyright a dance? I don't know. I I think there's there's a lot of legal discovery that's happening about that right now. Man, the internet's um, so weird. Dude, it's the so weird. The internet is so weird. So, we would never have this problem. No. Without the internet. The internet is so weird. But by the same token, you got to realize that like a lot of U.S. copyright laws are so stupid. Oh, I don't disagree with hilariously that. Hilariously like, out of date. But it's all, well, a lot of stuff's out of date. But, I mean, how do you... If that's copyrightable... Yeah. Well, somebody copyright a word. Uh, Dave from uh, the stupid auction show on the History Channel... The guy that goes, yep, yeah. uh, that guy, that guy sued a whole bunch of people. I, he sued Drake because of, uh, Drake? Because evidently Drake did something very similar. Yeah. I can't, Dave something or other. Yeah, he yeah. goes, yep. Yeah. Uh, that guy. I loathe his existence. I, yeah, I don't uh, like him either. Uh, but he sued, and I don't know if he won or not. Yeah. I think uh, the yup guy, yup Dave. I hate that guy. He's got Dave the branding Rawlings. all over his oh, yeah. van and everything. Ugh. Dave Hester. Ugh. I, I despise that man. But emotes are big money, so I did I did some quick like looking. Fortnite sells their emotes for between five and ten dollars a piece. They what? They sell their emotes, each individual dance or whatever, for between five and ten dollars a piece. So How? a lot of these guys just saw dollar signs. I mean I get it. I, I mean, think it makes gotta, them kind of crappy human beings, but from a business perspective, I get it. I Trey get songs, it. not Drake. Yeah. So because Trey songs used to go yeah, in all of his songs, all of yeah. his rap songs, and so Dave Hester goes yeah, and they were close, close enough, enough that he decided to sue. Okay, so <sighs> maybe they have legs to stand on when it comes to the I, whole dance thing. If that guy wins a, a copyright claim and can sue for the word yeah, yeah. How many times can I say that? I mean, hopefully zero more times. <laughs> I, was <laughs> I, was there, yeah. I was waiting for one. But I feel like if you could do that for a word, then you should be able to do that for a dance. It's yeah. Like when I see that Carlton dance, I know exactly who you know I, I can the point to the individual. It's a, it's a cultural reference. It is P I I. Apparently, it is. It is. Yeah. Like I know when I see that dance, where that came from. Yeah. Who the person? And who is. the person is? Yeah. Every time. That's an interesting argument right there. It is Whether PII. Whether or not it's PII, yeah. I, it's personally identifiable. Look, if that guy's, if smell can be personally identifiable. Why can't it dance? Everyone Dude, knows that it's him. If they start evoking or invoking PII or GDPR for dances and stuff, 
cool the half of the gaming industry as we know it will explode it'll, it'll just collapse overnight i mean because right now microtransactions in video games is that is the entire market you make your initial pass you you make some money off of the initial sale of the, of the game itself because video games have not fundamentally risen in price in probably 25 or 30 years Russ, so where they're making money is on the emotes that's russ's point yeah i wonder how much it matters when you have to pay for the emote versus yeah. it being included for free the carlton is free in forza horizon 4 yeah. great but game, you pay for the game yeah but i'm not paying for the carlton that's the difference in sport, specifically yeah. right in Fortnite, i'm yeah. paying for the carlton now but here's the thing though here's the flip side of that is there are a bunch of other games including one of my all-time favorite games destiny where you could also get the carlton and you had to pay for it nary a word was said about that though well but i i don't think again what it was destiny destiny yeah it wasn't the thing to do in destiny was it like Fortnite, neither the thing to do is dance like how well, many videos are out there of people like <clears throat> making a kill on ninja i'm gonna dance because i just killed ninja but that's the exact that same concept is is basically modern modern gaming at its finest it's i'm gonna do so it's counter-strike back in the day counter-strike was i got a kill and then i did a spray on the wall it used to be like you would you would uh it sounded like a spray gun like spray canister whatever and it was just like a picture you would throw like an image on the screen so memes a lot of memes came up that way being sprays after kills and stuff um same thing with uh overwatch destiny pretty much any recent uh shooter that i can think of it's i got a kill i know that it did great i know that i'm going to be able to take a clip of this later on when it was like hey look at this really cool kill that i got so it's bunch of kills do a dance happens all the time fortnite is not unique at all the difference is fortnite is just the biggest one that's it it's bigger than destiny no question it's not even it's well, not now even it is up but for like comparison now it is but at the time like even at hmm. destiny at its biggest if you took destiny one and destiny two combined it's not as big as fortnite i i think but i'm pretty comfortable in that larry makes a good point nobody plays destiny any more than greg well, that's probably for uh, actually actually wrong because I so Destiny Two burned me hard. They Bungie, I love y'all to death, but y'all took a great thing with Destiny One, got us hyped for Destiny Two, and then you immediately s to the bed. And that, I don't know, I don't I'm, play online. I'm, obviously, I'm I'm burnt. I haven't touched Destiny. Uh, the last two or three expansions that have come out, I haven't I haven't touched it. I don't have time for it, man. Kids, YouTube. Random I know, other you projects have a, that I you got. have a terrible YouTube CEO. Yeah, never lets me have a day off. This is this is my vacation for my civilian job, and you're still whooping me. Is that live show ready to go yet? Do you have Sa notes? Says the person who has done the last two weeks worth of videos. <laughs> eh, well, details. You know. And done it a day early. I play Wolfenstein 3D. Mm. Destiny has its following, but you have to buy it to play. Agreed. Same thing with, with Horizon. The thing with Destiny, though, is Destiny lives and breathes on microtransactions, and dances are a very big part of that. As as someone who has put uh, Destiny 1, I think I had like 850 hours in oh, it. Oh, that's how you got the t-shirt. That's how I got the t-shirt, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's just very interesting that all these, all of these other uh, actors and, and pop I, our pop culture icons are now reaching out for the big name on the block, which is Fortnite. And I'm very interested to see what impact this has on gaming as a whole, because right now, microtransactions are massive, billions of dollars, billions of just dollars. Just give a cut to the people. So I'm interested to see what happens with yeah, that. Just like, give is them a everything cut. just going to have to be licensed from here on out? Because here's the next thing, too. There's a question about whether or not these people actually own the rights to those dances. Because think about it, Carlton did it on a TV show. So does CBS or whoever own the rights to that? Not Carlton. I don't know. Or Alfonso, as it were. Even better, take it to the next level. Look at NBA. Uh, look at um, any NBA video game that's out there. Part of the, the allure, part of the charm of a lot of the NBA basketball games, or FIFA for this matter, like it applies across the board. FIFA, Madden, NBA, whatever. Um, it's the accuracy. It's the accuracy of the of the person that you're depicting in the video game, like the lifelike 
accuracy of that person. Those players get a cut from Madden. Let me just be clear. Hang on. That. But they don't own the rights to their tattoos. In the game. No, no, no. Or on their body. On their body. You don't own the right to your tattoo. Like, that's artwork. You're displaying it. But that's artwork owned by somebody else. So unless you specifically, when you got the tattoo created, unless you specifically also got the rights for that tattoo, that means you couldn't be then put into a video game where you get play, paid and the artist who did the tattoo doesn't get a cut of that. So now what do you have? Uh, an NBA game where nobody has any tattoos? Now suddenly people don't look like well, those so things? It's about, this is a story that in, just in came up fairness, today. today in I fairness, when I, la when I last played and created a player in like Madden or NBA... Mm -hmm. When you made them, like when you make a player, I got to choose their tattoos. Sure. I, a full disclosure, I actually never noticed enough to look at another player's tattoos. Like a a no a player yeah. that is like well if I go known look at LeBron well James, like I, I you yeah. know what a LeBron James tattoo sure. looks like. I never actually went and looked at the arm. Yeah. To see if it was like a real life depiction, or if it was just similar Close enough. enough yeah i never i could i can't actually yeah. tell you like i don't know you're, that's, you're right i yeah. get it that's um, that's the the fortnite stuff his has brought out a bunch of other like uh, video games mm. right but other mm -hmm. kind of video game related stuff or other media related companies that are looking at Ooh, hang on a second like how are we running afoul of what this fortnite case is uncovering i think it's really really interesting but t the potential to really, really upset the video game industry. Eh. Russ Russ brings up the point that uh, Fortnite genuinely lives on micro microtransactions because it's free. Completely agree. There's a lot of games that are out there right now that live and breathe on microtransactions that are among the best games that are out there. Fortnite, love it or hate it, is still one of the biggest games on the planet. Warframe, fantastic game if you like Destiny or that kind of looter shooter concept. Also free. Lives and breathes on microtransactions. Path of Exile, if you're a big uh, action RPG Diablo type of fan. I just started tinkering with that game because I heard so Jesus, much about it. I don't it. know any of these games. These are all, um, they started out as like little fan projects or uh, just kind of smaller games from smaller studios that went free to play. And free to play used to be the kiss of death for video games. So these are people, these are companies who have found a massive following and have built an incredibly successful company based on making a great game, zero dollars. You can buy it, you can play it right now for free dollars. And it just, hey, microtransactions, that's how you get by. Do you need a thing? Just buy it. It's, 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 a, it's a rare win, I feel like, for microtransactions. That's huh. it, I'm done. I'm done, done talking about Fortnite now. Uh, let's I skip love... RCS and yeah, go straight yeah, yeah. to the assistance. Uh, so there's a company called Loop Ventures that does an annual smart speaker I, or smart phone assistant, smart speaker assistant IQ test. Uh, they test, uh, they ask 800 questions across five broad categories. I'm going to read directly from the, the press release thing here. They asked 800 questions across five different categories, including locale. So, for example, where's the nearest coffee shop? Um, questions about commerce. Can you order me more paper towels, for example? Uh, navigation, how do I get to uptown on the bus? Information, who do the, pl the twins play tonight? Or just general commands, like remind me to call Scott by 2 p.m. today. Um, and they are judged on whether or not they understood the query, number one, and whether or not they provided an accurate answer, number two. So they took all this data and they've done it year over year for uh, the last, like, I don't know, five years or something like that, going back several years. Um, and Google Assistant murked everybody. Yeah, they got them. I mean, buried them. Buried them. There was... Google Assistant is the only one that understood 100% of the questions they asked. Understood, not necessarily answered Anthony. correctly, but understood 100% of the questions. So that's the, can I invoke the assistant yep. or whatever, and then ask it something and it actually understands what I said. That's huge, I feel like. That's that's a big one because you that's got- That's step number one. That's step one. You got to get that right before you get an answer. Now, whether or not they can answer it, they still have to understand it to then go out and mm -hmm. query the internet to give you the answer. 87.9%? So that's it answered correctly? That it answered 87.9% of 800 questions correctly. That's a lot of questions. That's still pretty good. 
That's really good. Yeah. I don't even know humans that are that good. And again, those if are If I still... asked you those 800 questions, I don't know if you could get 87.9%. Look, if, right. I got, if I got above 50%, I would be surprised. Right. I would that's be pretty genuinely good. surprised. That's good. That's really good. So the funny part is that's, I mean, heads and shoulders above all of the other competitors. Now, as far as understood queries go, Google was the only one that got 100%, but... The others were, were fairly close. Um, Siri had 99.6 correct, which means that Siri missed three questions out of yeah, 100. Eight, eight, oh, I thought it was 800. Sorry, 800. They, she missed three questions out of 800. That's still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but not as good as 100%. <laughs> uh, Alexa got 99%. That's missing eight out of the 800. And Cortana got 99.5. 4%, so that's missing five questions out of 800. And as far as the answered cor correctly uh, question goes, again, Google Assistant ran away with it. 87.9% of those 800 questions were answered correctly. Siri had 74.6, Alexa 72.5, and Cortana 63.4. Cortana they basically suck. Basically a coin flip. That's awful. That's really, really terrible. So what was it doing understood the other 40% you? of the time? Not answering questions correctly. I, what answer you know. did it give? Well, I mean, look, Siri is known for having some pretty off-the-wall questions. You ask Siri a basic question, and it goes, I don't know, here's some search you results hear what, that I came up with. Did you hear what Alexa did about the foster parents? <laughs> no. no. It was randomly giving, like, it would answer a question with, Kill your foster parents. No! I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'll look it up while you keep going. What? Yeah. No, so, okay. No joke. So, I don't understand what's going on in the, uh, in the Alexa sphere. Because this is not the first time that Alexa has been caught doing something unbelievably creepy. Do you remember when Alexa was laughing? The creepy yeah. laugh? According to a report by, was it Reuters? R -E Reuters. Reuters. Amazon, in its bid to get Alexa to, quote, mimic human banter, is making the voice assistant talk about everything under the sun. However, the company would like to ensure that Alexa does not end up displeasing its users. Blurting out, kill your foster parents, is not the only offending remark the voice assistant has made. Let me see if I can find out how, like, how did that get, Woo! how did that even get That's invoked? Spicy. How does that even, how do you even aye, invoke aye, that? Aye. Oh my Millions gosh. of users, yada, yada, yada. So a customer was shocked last year when Alexa blurted out, kill your foster parents. It's also chatted with users about certain types of adult acts. Uh, yes. Gave a discourse on dog defecation. <laughs> <laughs> and this summer, a hack Amazon traced back to China may have exposed some customer data. That's interesting. I did uh, not know that last part. I didn't know that one either. I know that Siri also got in trouble for you could ask it a very specific query and it would come back with uh, an R-rated response. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Jason, I am drinking the Great Lakes Christmas Ale and, you know, I always look forward to seeing you in the comments because I know that we can at least bro out for a little bit and talk about beer. Uh, yeah, Great Lakes, Great Lakes Christmas Ale. Love it. Love it. The Reuters piece citing anonymous sources said that recently reported gaffes were due to the voice aid's, quote, let's chat feature, which uses artificial intelligence to help Alexa chat more like a human being and bring up topics she finds on the internet. Alexa performed 1.7 million such conversations using chatbots in a four-month span alone. Hmm. As for the customer who got, quote, kill your foster parents, the chatbot feeding Alexa phrases was pulling... A Reddit quote without context. We have been on this. Con Why would you go to Reddit? Context matters. I agree with that 100% that the context matters. Why would you pull Reddit? But Reddit well, is not a great place to pull I, any type of quote, period. But I love definitely Reddit. not without context. I love Reddit. I think Reddit has its place. Uh, much like as much as as much as I hate to say it, you know, social networks have their place. Going to Reddit and pulling a quote is just one step removed from just sourcing directly from 4chan. I mean, it's it's not it's not a good look. It's, it's not a good look. So, I'm not saying that Google is perfect because Google hasn't had that yet. 
Look, you got the dance thing that's happening with Fortnite, <clears> and you got the assistant thing that's getting basically Alexa, Siri, and Google have been subpoenaed in some yeah. lawsuits yeah. Uh, for murder and things like that. When people can hear yeah. people get murdered, they're actually trying to go pull that information. Well, so, so interesting enough, if you have if you have a, a, a even even a Google phone let alone whether or not you're using yeah. like a home or anything like that, you can go to, I wish I had the URL off the top of my head, you might know, uh, but you can go into your Google account and you can pull up and play back the clips of any time that you've invoked the assistant verbally yep. and you get like, you I don't get, know, a half second or so mm -hmm. before you actually said the, the, the key words. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you get the context of what's happening in the background. But you don't get anything after that now that's even become even more apparent. You, well you get a little bit after that well yeah you get, so you like, get a little bit before a half second and a little bit after the, the query and then a little bit after yeah but not much after agree like agree. just a few seconds so you would have to if, so if you're being murdered uh shout your keyword yeah and then just keep talking um that's another thing that i've noticed is just keep talking because it will just keep listening Listening yeah. and listening and listening, and it will I mean, never it's, it's end a, the query. It's a brilliant play. If you're if you're being murdered or attacked or whatever, scream out the keyword and then just say like what's happening, where you're at, the person mm -hmm. that's doing it. If you know who it is, that's damn near an open and shut case at that point. Oh yeah. If you specifically say, hey, keyword, and all of the things, yeah. this person is this tall. This person is yada 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 yada. That's a that's a really big deal. That's a. It makes me a wonder, really like, is that interesting, like, internal security feature? Is that court admissible evidence? I don't know. Why? Like, I don't see like, how it couldn't. Okay, here's a supposition. Let's say that there is a there is a, a person who was, who was murdered, and they later on discovered that they had done exactly that. They called out the keyword, and they gave a description of the person. They even said the person's name, and they got it wrong. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I truly don't. Yeah. I mean, we're not lawyers. Because you're talking about you're talking about like they all, what the age old thing is. You can't. You have the, the the prosecuting attorney basically speaks for the dead, right? Yeah, yeah. And in a weird way, they're not. You're actually speaking from beyond the grave at that point. I mean, for you, you yourself. Have, yeah, you you have you are, your voice. Yeah. Archived in perpetuity, basically. And both Alexa and Siri and Google are good enough to recognize. That that is you. Yeah. It is programmed. That is like because if you ask it who it is, like if you yeah. go and ask your Google who are you, as long as you set it up right, it will say your name. Yeah. So creepy. You also, that's another trick for you. Go to maps.google.com and you can actually fiddle around with it. You can actually see everywhere you've been. Oh yeah, that's and that is super creepy. Super creepy. There is a there's an old demo that I used to do back in the day. Um, uh, I Google used to be is creepy too, yeah. man. I love look. I you know this. I love Google, but it's really super creepy. creepy. Uh, so I used to do this uh, this information technology security demo um, for this group that I was affiliated with, um, where I would basically uh, look at Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. Um, EXIF data on pictures will give you like time and uh, literal latitude and longitude coordinates of when a pic where a picture was taken and stuff like that. Short version is you used to be able to uh, crawl publicly facing social media sites, scrape pictures of a particular target that you had, then analyze all of that EXIF data that's embedded in every picture that you take. And you can basically put together a dossier on a person and, and give uh, pretty solid, accurate estimates as far as when a person is at what location. So between home, if you take a bunch of pictures at home and you take a bunch of pictures at work, the times that you take pictures at work are always gonna be during work hours. So you could basically determine somebody's work schedule, determine when somebody's gonna be home, determine places that they're likely to be, like if you frequent a coffee shop or something along those lines, yep. and, and basically profile the person from the comfort of your own home just by trolling publicly facing social media sites. Mm -hmm. Terrifying. Delete man. your Facebook. Yeah. Probably yeah. your Instagram. Probably, you definitely your Instagram. It's owned, it's owned by the same soulless corporate douchebag. I know, I know. Just saying. I just really you like it. Should do it. You should do it. All right. Well, then how am I going to connect with everybody? Look, that is a problem. And you should check out our video that's going to release this Sunday where we talk about exactly this type of problem. We don't have any solutions. 
Uh, we're just talking about for all of our other fellow content creators out there. Yep. Just a handful of things that we think that you should at least think of or be uh, or consider uh, either before you get into content creation or as you are kind of on the rise for content creation. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you know, th things to be aware of. Lessons that we've learned over the last year plus that we've been doing this. Yep. So check it out this Sunday. I'm not going to give you a time. This Sunday. <laughs> Sometime. Probably in the evening. If I had to guess. Probably like 10 o'clock. Well, yeah. Well, I also have uh, a birthday tomorrow and a birthday party the next day. So, You yeah. picked a bad day to do that. You picked a bad week. Yeah, because I'm in charge of that schedule. Let, let me call my wife up and say, hey, the CEO I did, says, No, 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 yeah, no, no. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You open your mouth, man. You open your mouth. It's done now. It's happening. That, that is not what I meant. I meant you picked a bad, like, I could, you want me to do this week's video? No. I got it. I'll take care of it. Even if I have to stay up until five o'clock in the morning just to make you happy, I will do it's it. Not you know what I mean? It's not for me. It's for all I'm a dedicated, hardworking employee. No, you're and not. And I care about all of you. He does do that, though. He's I not hardworking. <laughs> he, he definitely does care about you, though. Awesome. You got anything else? I, I have a thought. Can't wait for this. At the very bottom of the dock, mm -hmm. at the very, very bottom of the dock, mm -hmm. I literally brought no, wait, this there guy. There you go. Oh, this. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. Oh, the very, very bottom? Not this thing right here. No, not okay. that thing. Uh, That's hilarious, though. So, anyone who hasn't seen it yet, uh, Google put out a fantastic ad campaign. This isn't what he's talking about, by the way. Uh -uh. Fantastic ad campaign where they had uh, Macaulay, Macaulay Culkin, Culkin of Home Alone fame kind of reenact a lot of the uh, scenes from the first Home Alone. And, well, first and the second Home Alone, too, actually. Yep. Um, but, like, the, the tie-ins with the Google Assistant and stuff like that. I think I think the concept behind it is a lot of us talk about when we watch older movies, we look at, man, that would never... That movie would never happen in today's day and age because nope. one cell phone call and it's over. And that's a great example of a movie mm. that really only matters... Or really only worked because cell phones weren't, weren't a thing back then. So anyway, so they did this whole thing with the Google Assistant. It's really funny. Go check it out. Um, you can just type in uh, Macaulay Google Culkin. Google Assistant or, Filthy yeah. Animal. Yeah, that will do it for sure. Um, and by the way, all of the things that he talks about in in that clip, you can oh yeah, you, you can, can pull things up on your Google Assistant uh -huh. that are related to Home Alone. I don't want to say anything else, but go check it out. It's really funny. Um... So, this last thing that you're talking about, um, I'm a no on the second one. This guy? Well, I know it's a no. This is mostly just me pontificating. Like Pontificate away. I, I pontificate a lot. I throw out a lot of these random things. Like, there was oh, one what? I sent. I sent one earlier to Greg. He still hasn't talked about it to me. He... he he doesn't actually read my text messages, but that's okay. I don't. I, I read them uh, whenever I feel like I know you're not ignoring my text messages, Greg. <sighs> I, it's not that I'm ignoring them. Are you it's just ignoring that I don't my? Are you ignoring care. my text messages? Specifically, Greg? yeah. My text yeah, messages. Yeah, yours specifically. Yeah. Specifically. You know what? You picking up what I'm putting yeah, down? I know. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I have this thought: doing a vlog. Um, the problem I've always had with vlogs, especially about like I don't think my life's very interesting. Uh, it is to me but I don't see why it should be interesting to anyone else. However, I just... Well, here's the short version. Your life isn't interesting, so let's yeah, just well, go ahead. That sucks, and then the story's over. <laughs> Done! Anyway. Uh, so doing, like, this vlog style, like, I've been watching a lot from uh, uh, Terry Warfield up there in uh, Northeast Ohio. I yeah. think he's in Northeast Ohio. Uh, obviously, Peter McKinnon. Yeah. Uh, Sorel Amore. She's another one that I've been watching. <laughs> um, Jason says, text me. I'll be happy to ignore you. There you go. Perfect. Um, also, uh, Cody Wanner. Yeah. Wanner. Uh, you can say Casey Neistat, but it's actually been a lot of more smaller creators that I've gotten into. Peter, when I first found Peter McKinnon, he was only like 50,000 subs. Now he has 1.2 million, so huge. Also, if you haven't seen his video from today called the, um, uh, bucket, the bucket Shot, oh. fantastic. Holy crap, one of the best videos I've seen on YouTube just a regular dude it's really really good it's impressive enough to me because 
I I watch long videos. Like I'll watch hour, two hour long videos, no problem. Yeah, they're called movies. Well, idiot. Whatever podcast <laughs> stuff like that. I hate you so much. <laughs> You're not. You won't watch. Look, if it's you're more not, than you're not a minutes, fat idiot like me. If it's more than five <laughs> minutes and it doesn't capture your attention in the first eight and a half seconds, you're done. Done. This was a twenty minute video. Twenty three minutes, and I watched it twice, second to second, beginning to end. That's insane to me. I have right. to watch this video. It's now. really good. If it's not amazing, it's fantastic storyteller. Long story short, I'm they vlog. They do things very interesting. So like, if they can do it, who's to say that I can't? Now Terry. Yeah. Terry and Cody got together and did a, just a really positive, uplifting vlog that I really, really liked. And so I'm really big about uh, kind of PMA, positive mental attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg knows this. Contrary to like what our channel might come across as, I think of myself as mostly a positive person. You are. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's really super interesting, but I don't know if that has a place in our channel. It says <laughs> it says vlog in our in our banner, but uh, Jason I, Jason says I should file workplace harassment. We don't have an HR department. <laughs> you guys are dumb. I am the HR department. I am the law. <laughs> I'll do what I want. Hey, we've done we've, file your complaint. Would you like to Would you like to register an official complaint? Denied. I, I, I sent you this earlier. I have a, uh, a a government entity hurt feelings report that is one of my all-time favorite documents to print out and send to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have that one. Anyway. I do. I have it. I filed it in the trash can. Yeah. File 13. <laughs> Done. Just yeah. like that. So, yeah. I, go on. Almost like a call and response. Okay. But I don't want it to... Like, this sounds We really, do vlogs though. Like we, we, we are do not do vlogs, but we don't do vlogs. We don't do them daily, but when there's a topic that comes up that is And I don't think it should be daily. I don't weekly, but in addition to our weekly regular content. Like the Sunday release is the okay. Sunday release. It is okay. what it is. Okay. But I think that like a, there's been many times where like I will want to vlog something because mm -hmm. I think it's interesting and I just don't do it. So, like, I almost want to issue some type of challenge, either to you or me or one yeah. way or another. Like, something to basically hold my feet to the fire to do the thing. Now, I haven't thought it through, but I want to throw it throw it in here and have a conversation, you know, with everyone else who makes decisions for our channel. The regular um, public. I don't know what it would look like, but <clears> something. <throat> I So, I have a problem with creating content that... I have a, the, the problem that I have with deadlines, and you and, you and I have rehashed this conversation a bunch of times. The problem that I have with like artificial and arbitrary deadlines is the you have to make a piece of content by a certain date just because that's the agreement and not because it's something that you really believe in. I agree with you. The Sunday video is kind of like that thing that we always agree. Like, yeah. that, that's just the thing we do. Thursdays, yeah. we say 8 p.m., but let's be real, it's like 8.03, 8.07, or last week, just not at all. Yeah. But you get the general Thanks, point. Is like, wow, internet. You get the general justice in the vicinity of the yeah. bubble. With the yeah. vlog, it's one of those things like, I want to I wanna say I'm going to do a weekly vlog mm -hmm. about something, not knowing when it will be released. Yeah. It'll be weekly, and it's in addition to a live show and a thumbnail. Hang on. We need to acknowledge. Oh, he has arrived. The, the, the presence of the man himself. He, the man has arrived. Preston. Mr. Preston McNair. The, Thank you the so much. The one for and us. only Preston. Good Thanks to see for you. joining us. Smiley face back at you. Big hugs. Hearts and hugs. Indeed. And maybe and kisses. Stuff. I mean, whatever you're into. Whatever. It's I don't French. judge. It's French for cola. I, <laughs> it's French for liter of cola. <laughs> oh. Good night, Jason. Anyway. Yeah, but the general gist is like, I want see something to basically make me do it. Because I think once I get in and I do it, mm -hmm. I think I'll have a blast doing it. Probably. But I just gotta, I, gotta, I need that spark. You know what's funny is I have also been weighing the idea of doing other content that doesn't, correct me where I'm wrong on this assumption, but it's something that sort of matches up with what we're doing now, but is also kind of an independent thing. Like, does it really line up with what this channel is? Miss Sheila just said, don't call it a vlog. Vlog is messing you up. I think you're right. Like. It's not a vlog. It's a yeah. It's content. Yeah, it's content. So, and that's that's where I'm at with. I've got probably five or six ideas for 
videos that, I mean, let's be real, I don't think that they're gonna get clicks, but we have already had the conversation about sometimes you just gotta make content, even though you know that it's not gonna get clicks. It's because more it about, makes you happy. Yeah. Um, or it's Watch just, Sunday's video. Release it like 8 a.m. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Uh, definitely that early. I'm sure there will be an 8 somewhere in the time. I'll make your thumbnail. I appreciate you. I don't know what the thumbnail is going to look like. It'll be a thumbnail, though. I have some thoughts. Okay. Can't wait to see this. Explosions. Explosions. Um, eh. Something. You get the sure, general yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm trying to, like, okay, a vlog or... You, much to your point, an Instagram yeah. photo challenge. I, I don't necessarily think Instagram is necessarily the answer, but forcing myself to do something just a shade different. So that's that's a lot of experimental stuff that I, I'm I'm genuinely curious about how other people that are in the content creators community, you know, the the Gary, if you're still out there, like when you're talking about experimental content stuff that. Like you've got your bread and butter, you've got the stuff that is that is arguably, it's it's the content that is enabling you to continue to make more content, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's the it's the money maker stuff. When you've got that, give me stuff, and you know that you have this other pretty experimental stuff that you would like to do, but you also understand that that's going to long term kind of hurt your demographics. Yeah, it's going to hurt your analytics. How, how do you do that? I am of the opinion now that you just got to make it, man. You just got to do it. Because, number one, you don't know. You don't know yeah. if it's going to be something that takes off. If that is, if it blows up so big that you, you come to me in a week and you go, hey, man, this thing is like, it's got a mind of its own. I'm done with the channel. Like, I, got, I have to go pursue this. Well, I don't know if I would do that. Look, if you if you had a format and a thing that was so massively popular that it eclipsed everything else that we had done on or this just channel, bring you with me. But it's but that's your thing. What if you're doing something that I'm just like, hey man, I appreciate it, but I'm just not I'm not interested in that. Well, I would force you because you're the boss. Because <laughs> I'm the CEO, and you do what I tell you to do. File a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get it. Like yeah, and I would say the same thing for you. It's like if you want to be like, no, nah, dude, I want to go like. Linus Tech Tips Deep. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's not my thing. Yeah. But hey, you know, do you want to just add it as a sub-channel on the channel? And yeah. you want to keep the sub you know, Whatever, like, figure out a way to make it work. But I, I would argue we're probably, I don't want to say we're not far from that. I don't think that that's the case whatsoever. But I can also easily envision. Are you breaking up with me? I am. Live on the internet, I'm breaking up with you right now. Scott, it's been real. But not fun. Uh... I can see us doing like multiple different channels because there's some other content that I'm interested in that is just not a good fit for this channel. Okay. But same thing with like if you wanted to do like I don't know daily, daily family life vlog or something along those lines. Yeah, that definitely does those. not fit on this channel. That's that's what I'm saying though. But if I mean that's something that you are passionate about, that's it, it easily an area where I can see having, having. Like I don't know how it all works in YouTube parlance, but like having thing channels that are linked together loosely, but it's like your own little play space for experimental content. I think that's important. I still <laughs> technically have a channel that is my own personal channel that I started a while back with 25 whole subscribers. Just go the Garth Brooks route. Chris, Chris Gaines. Gaines. Oh, wow. awful. Deep no. cut. Also, awful. why? Why would you do that? Whatever. Like, Garth, if you're that rich and that just do it, do whatever filthy, you want to do. Filthy, rich, and successful. Whatever, man. Who's I mean, gonna tell you no? Who no tells one. Tom Cruise no? No one. The answer is nobody no does. One. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. You know that's interesting. Like, if I were to do like a, if I were to do a vlog, kind of like a Cody or a, a Terry yeah. Warfield style, that doesn't fit here. I mean, it, it kind of does. It, it does and it doesn't. And, and that's where, this is where you and I will always, look, you're, you're really getting some behind the scenes stuff here. This is where you and I always kind of talk ourselves into circles about like what does and does not fit. And it's because the YouTube algorithm is so sensitive to frankly punishing you for content that just doesn't get views. This live show doesn't make us money at all. This hurts us way more than it actually makes us money, which is why all of our live shows, we leave it up for 24 hours and then we delist them. Or three days. Depends on how busy we are, you know, it's whatever. But point being, like we don't we don't leave that stuff up because long term that hurts us. And you know, yeah. vlog vlog content, who knows? It might be either the thing 
that separates us from everyone else and you know puts us into the stratosphere it might be the thing that is just wildly successful and you spin it off and do your own thing and hey more power to you or it might it's funny that you bring that up preston sunday's think, video talks about analytics a bit. i think too many people get wrapped up in analytics when trying something new i completely agree but there's what makes it difficult is what is the fine line? How do you walk that fine line between understanding that the analytics are important? The analytics are trying to tell you something, whether or not you can divine anything. Tease from them. That. Don't don't give it away. Don't. I'm not. Them. I'm Tease not. them. But whether or not, how, like, how does that inform the decision making process for content that you create? Mm -hmm. That's a that is a tough tough line to walk. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that I get it wrong a lot. I think we all, well, we yeah. get it wrong a lot. Um, a lot, a lot. Yeah. We've had videos to go like gangbusters, and I've got... No idea why. No Couldn't idea replicate. why. replicate. I have a Google Wi-Fi video out there that was one of the first videos that I ever did for this it channel. It was the first video that you ever did for the channel. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the very well, first video. Well, and not counting the intro one that we the did. The intro too. one doesn't count. Yeah. That's not... That's so, just, yeah. That was just a... We're rebranding. The, the very first one, very first video that I officially released on this channel, blew... Oh, and it his, is one his, of the most successful videos we have ever had. And on his show. head could not fit through the door when that was I had to like, turn sideways, man. It was it ridiculous. Did. It was amazing. I slept outside for a week because I just I couldn't he get thought upstairs. thought everything he touched turned into gold. It did, for sure. Turns out it was it was fool's gold. Pyrite. See what I... Do you get the... Okay. Because the... Little, little chemistry joke for, oh, for all y'all out there. Oh, my God. Love you all. Got you, fam. Uh, to but... Press into your point. Go ahead. No, it, it, it's it's... The we have fallen victim of the oh, let's look at the analytics and then just getting way too obsessed with numbers and it's mm -hmm. it's really not. I mean, the numbers are trying to tell you something, but you'll you'll argue yourself into a black hole trying to talk about what message are those numbers telling you? Like we just did. Like we just did. And Absolutely. it's easy to do. Super. But easy. Uh, teaser points numbers two and three. It's a it's a ten point video. Ten point video. Ten. ten Ten items. steps. Yeah. Points two and three. Super interesting. Yeah. Well, all ten are, but two and three. <laughs> way, way to sell them on it. Like, uh, I mean, all of them are. You should totally watch everything. And, beginning and to end, end. Seconds to seconds, watch it ten times. Yes. For please, the love of God, <laughs> please watch it ten times. Why? Yeah. Because analytics. That's it's, why. It's because analytics. That's why. <laughs> 100%. Make sure you watch that 100%. Oh, we got it. At least three minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah. Help For the out. love of God! That's all I got. All right. Uh, that's socials. all I got, man. Hey, that's going to do it for us for this week. You can find me on uh, the Tweet Machine because that's the only thing I do. At Ominous Hominid. Uh, <laughs> if you check down in the lower thirds, it should have been scrolling back Oh, and there forth. it is. Oh, Through. it was. Uh, uh, almost. Womp, womp. Uh, there it is. You'll see it up there, though. <laughs> Where can people find you? Uh, well, right now, at Twitter, at Scott Peachy. Fuzzy Fruit with an EY on mm -hmm. the end. And then currently, Instagram, at the Scott Peachy. The. But I'm not 100% sure I'm going to keep that. I think I'm probably going to, but I want to, but I don't really know. Maybe. I don't You're going to keep it. I don't know. even pretend like you're going to get rid of it. I, know I like know. pictures. Mm -hmm. I like the talkies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just kind of ended it there. Like We've already just ended the stream as it is and like everything. Anyway. Really funny. Love you all. Thank you all so much for a crazy successful 18. Uh, yeah. We more than doubled the channel from January to December. I hope we get to do it again. For sure. Um, I would love to. Let's triple it. I don't know. Figure out a way. Let's get crazy. Help, yeah. Let's help us triple things because triples are cool. And we are going to also double down on more, maybe not more content per week, but uh, I mean, I'm committed to always, always improving the content that we're putting out and trying to make it a little more timely. Got some studio changes planned. Oh Hopefully, yeah. uh, by uh, the not too distant future, we're gonna have things flipped around and we'll be shooting, over you there. don't know this, but we'll be shooting that way against a wall that is over there behind the camera. So no more Star Wars posters behind us because that glare, that's obnoxious, man. I gotta get rid of that. That's driving me crazy. So. Yeah, got a whole bunch of things planned for 2019, so here's to uh, uh, a, a bigger and better 2019. All right, brother, let's do this thing. I know, right? Miss Sheila, you're awesome. At Larry, uh, big body Cadillac. I put him to the side. I'm trying to, I'm trying to slim down <laughs> to <laughs> that big body. 
I'm rebranding. He's, he's going to be... I'm a big, big body Chevy. <laughs> he's, he's aiming for Toyota Prius. We'll see if he ever gets Ain't going to happen. <laughs> mm -mm. Scott Speaks, do three then. I like that. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. Perfect. All right. Have a good, happy rest of the holiday. Oh, uh, yes. Last New show of 2018. Year. Merry New Year. Happy yeah. New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All that jazz. Or All the things that you Christmas, celebrate. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. We don't judge. I don't care. Do your thing. I don't do whatever you think. Yeah. Whatever. We don't yeah. care. 